Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights, part of the Kings of Horror Network. This is M.L. Miller. Today, I'm taking a look at The Hunt, which was released finally right before the pandemic hit. And it was directed by Craig Zobel, who also directed Compliance, and written by the Lost Watchmen Leftovers crew of Nick Coos and Damon Lindelof. The film has a pretty big cast, but the main stars are Betty Gilpin, Hilary Swank, Ian Barinholtz, Wayne Duvall, Ethan Supley, Emma Roberts, Christopher Berry, Sturgill Simpson, Kate Nolan, Amy Madigan, Reed Burney, Glenn Howerton, among others. The Hunt is newly released on Blu-ray and DVD, but it's been available on demand and digital download for a while. I didn't feel like paying $20 to see the film, so this is the first time I've had a chance to take a look at it. I honestly wish there were more films made today like The Hunt. With the way our culture is in the current movement, I don't think that'll be the case. I wish more people had the ability to laugh at themselves. Everyone is so entrenched in politics and the hatred of the other party that a sense of humor and a sense of irony is beyond the realm of consideration. I think that's why The Hunt isn't going to be very popular among those who feel political belief is something one should wear on one's sleeve and fill up one's social media feed. Those who feel the need to delete anyone with a different take on a particular issue aren't going to get The Hunt. Those who don't think the people on the other side of the political spectrum are worth listening to or even human beings worth caring about won't take a second and consider that what the hunt is trying to say. It's sad that the world is the way it is today, but I'm glad at least the hunt took a chance to try to let us know how ridiculous we all are. The hunt opens with a group text referring to a game where people are being hunted. Cut to a period of time later, and we open on a group of people waking up on the edge of a field with gags on. A crate of weapons is found just before someone from off screen begins shooting some live, some die, and it's pretty evident that this is a most dangerous game scenario where man hunts man until the last one is standing. One of the hunted, Crystal, Betty Gilpin, from Netflix's Glow, seems to be very proficient in not getting killed and attempts to whittle the hunters down to find out who is behind it all. Now, The Hunt is a thriller heavy on action, comedy, and gore. It's also a politically charged satire, but if you re-examine the description I just said, you won't see the terms Republican, Democrat, Liberal, or Conservative show up at all. The main reason is that it doesn't matter if it's Liberals or Conservatives doing the hunting or being the hunted, as both walks of life are satirized in equal proportions. In both instances, the most broad exaggerations and ugliest of traits associated with both political movements are poked fun at, highlighted, and shown for how horrible they can be. There really is no good guy or bad guy in The Hunt. It's a film that points out how ridiculous those who blindly serve either side of the political coin can be. It's pushed to extremely violent lengths, but given the horrors that happen in the news every day, it really is not a far leap from what could happen given the right circumstances. Because this film delivers judgment to both Democrats and Republicans with such an even hand, I know there will be some disgusted at the way the film humanizes some people, and at the same time, there will be those who take offense for people being categorized in such a harsh light. Those people, sadly, are lost in their own inner dichotomous thought space. This movie isn't for them, because honestly, they lack the insight, the humor, and the modesty to realize that yes, there are times that both Democrats and Republicans, liberals and conservatives, haves and have-nots, are goddamn morons. And just because you choose to align yourself with one side or the other doesn't mean you can't say that from time to time. If you're able to laugh at your own party's idiocy, and not take everything seriously, I think first, you're one of the sane people, and I know there are tons of those out there, more than the talking heads on the news would like you to think. And secondly, I think you'll really enjoy the humor, the action, and the thrills the hunt has to offer. And the humor, action, and thrills are top-notch in the hunt. 
The cinematic fight scene at the end is one of the best choreographed hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes I've seen since the Jason Bourne series, as the participants utilize their fists, feet, heads, and whatever happens to be near them to throw, stab, and pummel their opponent with. There are all sorts of fun twists that will keep you guessing what is real, who's on whose side, and which end is up that occur all the way until the very end. There are moments of laugh-out-loud hilarity as guts, grime, and goo is splattered, spattered, and smattered all over the place. Politics aside, this is an extremely fun and capable roller coaster ride worth taking. The cast is great too, as all sorts of people pop up for cameos, bit parts, and larger ones. If there is a lead, it's Betty Gilpin's Crystal, and she is a fascinating enigma to see make her way through the carnage, and one worth rooting for. Hilary Swank is also fantastic here in a role that is the most physically demanding for her since Million Dollar Baby, and she really dazzles on the screen, despite the fact that I can't remember the last time I saw her in a movie. Other notables are It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia's Glenn Howerton, My Name is Earl's Ethan Supley, Blue Ruins' Macon Blair, and Fan Forstick's Emma Roberts. It's fun to see who lives until the next time and who dies a horribly gruesome and hilarious death. I also love the way writers Nick Cruz and Damon Lindelof and filmmaker Craig Zobel were able to end this film in a way that makes you laugh as well as wonder who won after all of this mayhem. The answer is none of them. They are all horrible. They are all us, though, to one extreme or another, and believe it or not, if you live life solely by identifying with one set of politics or another, you're pretty horrible too. There's more to life than that, and it frustrates me that too many people are too blind to see how much time they're wasting arguing online. The final conversation about the misinterpretation of Animal Farm wonderfully sums up how everyone thinks they aren't the pigs in the story, when in one case or another, we are all pigs from time to time. I wish more people would see the hunt. I feel if one would go into it with open eyes, it might actually spark some conversation with opposing parties instead of online debate with two fingers in one's ears and one hovering over the unfriend button waiting for someone to say something you disagree with. I'm not saying that the hunt could be the cause of world peace, but at least it could help by showing the bad in everyone. It could highlight the good in all of the audience. I'm very interested in the way the current era we all live in will be looked back upon. Once everyone gets a little distance from the most recent crisis and the ability to look back, analyze, and be humble enough to admit mistakes were made and alternative routes could have been taken, I wonder what we'll all think of the year 2020. I honestly think there will be more films like The Hunt, but I also feel like we have to get a few years or more ahead of this current state of things to have the ability to look back with clear heads and fully appreciate what the movie is trying to say. I thought The Hunt was a film that was wise beyond its years. The filmmakers were able to look at the current political conflicts with surprisingly unbiased eyes and offer up an exciting film that can stand on its own as a thriller as much as it can as a political satire. I hate getting political as I'm sure to piss off at least 50% of my viewers Still, I think The Hunt does a hell of a lot right when it comes to satirizing the moment we're all in, and delivers a damn entertaining movie to boot. I fully recommend this film. It surprised me, as I kind of loathed it when I saw the first trailers, as I felt it was kind of a purge ripoff. Turns out I was wrong, and I hope more people will take a chance on The Hunt and try to view it as the hilarious and smart satirical thriller that it is, rather than retreating into one's political corner and chastise it for getting under your skin. What did you guys think of The Hunt? And let's try to set a precedent and keep it civil down there in the comments, please. Well, that's it for this installment of ML Miller Frights. If you dug this video, click the like button below. Share this with your pals across social media, and please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to be alerted as to when future videos drop. You can also check out written reviews on ML Miller Writes. Until next time, thank you for watching and take care. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be. 
stuck inside your